Hello, my name is Joshua Rudd with Rudd's Home Farm, and today we're gonna to be talking about how close to put your grow lights to your plants. Stay tuned to find out more. Start with a general range. Try to look up to see if the manufacturer of your light provides information on how close or far away you should keep your light. If not, Follow these general tips. If your light is 100 watts, you want to keep it between 8 and 12 inches away. Anything below 100 watts isn't really useful for any sort of real type of growing. Uh, maybe, to, maybe if you got a plant by a window or something and you need to give it a little extra light, that's for under 40 watts. But if you're looking to grow stuff completely under grow lights, you're gonna at least need 100 watts. So 100 watts, eight to 12 inches away, um, 200 to 399, that's gonna give you between uh, 12 and 20 inches. Um, 400 to 600 is gonna be you about 20 to 27 inches, and then 600 up to 1,000, up to however bright you can get, is gonna, you're gonna need at least three feet and up away from the top of your plants. Some things you need to note, if you're using reflective paneling, like mylar I have back here, you wanna give your plants a little extra height and monitor them very closely because all that additional reflected light into your plant may overwhelm it. Uh, it's always better to start a little further away than you need to and then move in instead of getting as close as you think as you need. We all love our plants, and so you think that more light means more love, but you don't wanna burn your plants. So it's always good to start, be a little cautious with how close you are, and then kinda of move it down, wait a couple of days, move it down, and then, then you can find your little sweet spot. I keep my light a little bit closer to germinate my plants to kinda of simulate the spring sun. Once they germinate, I tend to move them a little bit further away. It's not really necessary, but it's my preference, just to kind of make sure I get as much germination rate as possible. So the next thing you wanna do after you set a general range, a general height, is you wanna monitor your plants closely and they will tell you exactly what they need. So common symptoms of plants that do not get enough light are yellowing and dropping of leaves, stunted leaf growth, elongated stems, and dull color. So I have not had any issue with too little light. I almost always have issues with too much light, most likely as I set the right height, I get everything dialed in, and then of course the plants grow upwards toward the light, and then as they grow up, then they get burnt. So. I don't really have great examples, but if you wanna make sure that your plant's not too leggy, because once it gets leggy and is reaching and is weak, it might not recover. It might have a, a weak plant at the base of it where it was weak and then the rest of the plant is trying to be healthy and it just looks crazy. So go ahead and make sure you're watching your plants to make sure you give them enough light. Now on to the big one, too much light. This is an example of a cucumber plant getting too much light. As you can see, the leaves have singed tips. I'm sure you can see it well with the camera, but the tips are singed. Um, you'll have burn patches. You can see here, there's certain spots on the leaf that are burned, okay? And they're very brittle. They're kind of like, really really brittle and it's like so you want to be careful of that and imagine yourself getting sunburnt right imagine yourself you sat out in the sun too long on the beach and you got sunburnt this is the kind of the same reaction a plant will give you so this is kind of what you're looking for i think most growers will tend to have this problem instead of the not enough light problem just because of how powerful LED lights out there are now and all the grow lights and so. 
and plants tend to grow into the lights and then get sunburned. So you wanna go ahead and adjust your lighting if you see stuff like this, okay? So there are three methods of adjusting how much light you give your plants. Number one is of course, how close you keep your light to your plants. You move it further away, you give them less light. You move it closer, you give them more light. Number two, you can also set up timers. I use a timer here and it automatically shuts on and off the lights on a 16 and eight schedule. So if you can't move up your light more, it, like in my shelving system, there's only a certain distance away you could keep it, then you could always adjust how long you keep them on. So even if the light was touching the leaves and you, but you only kept it on there for four to six hours, it would be the equivalent of a day's full of light. Just generally speaking, I'm not trying to get into any math or whether that's completely equivalent or not. But the gist is you can have a timer on there and reduce the amount of light the plant receives. Or you could add or remove reflective sheeting. I use a lot of mylar just because I like to get the most efficiency out of my grow lights. I'm, you know, I'm paying for electricity. It's like I want to get the best use out of it and also that controls how close i can put the lights and you know saves time and energy so i put reflective on not only my trays but at the back wall as well because there's just a concrete wall that's just soaking up light so if i can reflect some of that light back then that more light is more useful then i and then i could use less energy so i highly recommend that you use reflective sheeting in your systems and gets the best energy for your light. Another reason why I use uh, reflective sheeting is that um, the light doesn't penetrate the camp canopy as much as sunlight does. So sunlight travels millions of miles and so penetrating a couple inches down through a canopy of something is no big deal for the sun. But that is a big deal for grow lights because you're only sending light a foot or two down. Those couple of inches of canopy might be hard for the light to penetrate. So I put the, the reflective mylar down here so it reflects it back up to the bottom of the canopy. And so all of it can get a good source of light and even the shaded leaves can get good light. So thank you for joining me on how close to Put your lights to your plants. Put a comment in the comment section and tell me if you have burnt leaf plants like I have and tell me what you did to correct it, whether you adjusted for further away, put your timer on there, or did you add or remove reflective sheeting? Thank you for watching this and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.